with the artistic. Damn, that's weird. We're back with Nick, Jay, and Jose. It's weirdly artistic. We're talking art. We're talking weird and everything under the sun. We're the artistic. Damn, that's weird. <laughs> We're the artistic. Welcome back, everybody. This is weirdly artistic. I am Jose. I'm Nick. And I'm Jordan. And I'm Aaron. So we're back for episode eight. Aaron is our guest today. Hello, hello. First Thank special you for coming guest. on. Glad to be here. Let's uh, cheers, cheers to that cheers. one. Yeah. First cheers, guest. Cheers. Welcome, welcome. Cheers. Thank you. To our first guest on our podcast. So. A glorious guest. Our glorious guest. One of our favorites already. Yep. Appreciate it. So we brought Aaron on today because he is in the industry. He's mm-hmm. in the film world. Working on sets, working on scripts, working, producing all kinds of things. Acting. Um, acting. acting, yeah, we'll writing. get to that, even though he's not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll but get he's, there. Deep, he's deep in the industry, which there is we what we're mainly talking about on here, and it's, it's awesome to have you yeah, on. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's cool to have this, like, the idea you guys had to just have artists come on and talk about their lives and what they do. Like, and the struggles and your what struggles, you go your through. Your successes, all what's, what's worked for you, what hasn't. All you that. Know? Yeah, how can we help others, you know? Yeah, it's we're, cathartic to get to just actually hear about it. Yeah. But, yes, um, so Aaron Take and us away. I went to school together. We were in film. Uh, he got involved. Uh, Jose and I were talking about it in the more traditional aspect of it, uh, kind of the way that they taught us to do it in school, right. which is Worked why I from didn't go that way. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But he... Went the traditional way and joined in on sets and got in really early, got his name out there. And that kind of leads into our first question is, where did you start? Uh, st- well, the film journey, I would say, started about junior year of college, of the first two years of school. I knew I wanted to do something creative. I wanted, I took like creative writing classes because there was no like major to be a book writer. I thought I wanted to write novels. But... As time went on, I was like, all right, I got to figure out something that I actually want to do that lets me be creative. And every time I would write something that was a book, I would go about it with the mindset of maybe someday somebody can turn this into a movie. And then I learned that Eastern had a film program, read a single script, tried writing my own script, and the writing style of the script like perfectly matches exactly Mm -hmm. the way that I write. You don't have to go into too much detail. You don't need 500 pages. You just... Get the information. That's a long ass movie. Yeah, it's a really long ass movie, and I'm not watching it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you your script can be five pages, it can be five hundred, it can be fifty. You can make a movie as long as you want. Versus writing a book, kind of feels like there's a threshold of what you yeah can. what you can fit in there. Yeah. What did you think before high school, or like you were in high school, then going into college? Did you already like? think know what you wanted to do uh, or did things change then, like speak even to then. those high school kids right now like since you, i was a kid yeah. i thought i wanted to write books i knew i wanted yeah. to be a okay. writer but since i was a kid i thought i wanted to write books just because okay. scripts weren't that readily available to me but yeah i'd be the kid that was daydreaming in math class because i didn't get what you're talking about so i'm going to create stories in my head and start doodling and drawing and writing mm. and doing whatever because I'm not a tech brain, I'm not a math brain, I'm not a science brain, but you get me in like an English class or a history class or you're anything creative. artistic, love it. And that's where I thrive, so. And you're kind of weird, so. And I'm a little weird. Yeah, so love that. Fits. Fits. Um, so after you got into college, you knew you wanted to screenwrite. Uh, we got involved. I remember first day, they said, hey, uh, this is choose your genre of like what you wanted to basically make right in the film program and that's when we linked because we were like action and or blockbuster yep. right like that's what yep. we wanted the big we, yeah michael mm-hmm. bay michael shit. bay yeah, yeah i'm cool. glad we're getting to this point because you and i specifically we've always had this brain of like we have the opposite sides yeah which and is all, I, I mean like creatively like even back in like early college days we were the ones that are like let's make this 10 million dollar blockbuster movie and we don't have that yes yeah, <laughs> so but we like, still we tried. have ten dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we definitely tried i only have seven <laughs> <laughs> what can i get for this special effects <laughs> we'll yeah. call chris yeah so it's like it's really nice to uh, now be in a place where you're meet not only meeting more people but we have like grown and now we've you have a whole team with you and stuff we do like, yep. that's we do. awesome Crew. yeah and we all complement each other as well which is really great and for those of you that don't know Aaron is kind of the 
pre side of what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, us here on the yellow couch are the production guys. We are the camera, the lighting, the audio. We're the tech boys. Don't put any of that in my hands. <laughs> I don't want to touch Unless we show him. I mean, show me what to do and then I got you. Other than that, don't put the camera in my hands. But most of our films and or things that we've written have gone through Aaron, at least as a revision or ideas or something. Let me check it out. Yeah, we, I mean, we're the tech guys. I've always sent you beat sheets and I'm like, hey. uh, Oh, yeah. That's not. I just threw up, but here you go. (laughs) That's not abnormal to just, hey, I had an idea last night and I wrote a bunch of stuff. Here you go. Like, that's not weird at all. Add some dialogue and the pretties. (laughs) Yeah. Have you been writing ideas with chat GPT yet? Yes. I want to know. It's a little wonky because. It's wonky. It's learning. Yeah. (laughs) You have to like. It's so cool if it gets a storyboard and freaking movie out. It can. I mean, write it. It can like outline yeah like a story for you but the outlines are pretty basic yeah like it'll be like at this point your antagonist needs to be evil <laughs> so uh, thanks yeah you <laughs> thanks. saved so me a whole five minutes uh, appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. he always has been good <laughs> awesome. perfect yeah you're doing a good job GBT. appreciate it yeah, good job gold star for you yeah <laughs> awesome. we'll keep trying so okay we're through college uh well actually not through college what was your first like opportunity into the film school. I know that uh, Eastern had some options of getting involved as a student, getting, you know, making sure that we had opportunities. Uh, there's two ways, ma'am and the show that mm-hmm. you worked on. Tell and us a little bit about that. I like capitalized on both of them. Uh, the show that I interned on, Z Nation, I hadn't even graduated yet, and I started as an intern on Z Nation. I was a PA on set. I was a PA in office. And... Basically, you can't really learn about being on set until you're on a set. Like, Mm -hmm. you can get, like, the pre-learning done and know what – you can know words and terms, but you can't – How do you execute them? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. until you get on set. So, uh, as an intern, I got to do that. And then from there, I met one of the directors of the show. is named Juan, who at the time was directing a play. So, I went to ask him for advice, and his advice was – in order to be a good director, you got to learn how the actor feels. So you got to put yourself in the actor's shoes. By the way, I'm directing a play. Here's the audition times. Be here at this time. Can't wait to see you. And I'm like, I'm not an That's actor. Sick. I have no. I've never been on a stage. I don't. I have no desire to do this. I think all. it's the hardest kind of acting. Yeah, it is. Because and like, when I joined into it, that particular play was called Daisy. Um, Can you give us a rundown? It took place in the 1960s. I'm not great with... What's a rundown? (laughs) 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 Give us a rundown on what a rundown is. Can you use it in another sentence? Use it in a sentence, yeah. um, Sounds like it's an important thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's about a group of um, ad... They work at an ad agency, and they are working for President Lyndon Johnson, and it's around the time where he's running for a campaign, and he wants to create a commercial where they drop an atomic bomb and a little girl dies. And the whole thing is about... An atomic bomb for one girl? For one girl. She was pretty evil, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what does she <laughs> do? Yeah. But it, for the war. It was kind of like, if you want to stop the war and you don't want your kids to get hurt, vote for Johnson type is the deal. What if I only had boys, though? Well, then you can vote for whoever, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah at that point, it doesn't oh, affect doesn't you. Ap- yeah. yeah, it doesn't apply to you. But yeah, it, yeah we... The whole group was about us making the ad, if we felt comfortable with it, who was for it, who was against it. I played Johnson's representative from the White House. I felt so regal. Right? Wow. So I was the guy that was like yelling at everybody <laughs> to get it done, no matter how you felt. And there was also a aspect of it. So you weren't really acting. Not really, <laughs> yeah. no. Not really. There was also even more so there was also an aspect of it because my character obviously i'm black but the character is written as black so oh that's awesome the fact that i am a black character in a working in a white house in the time period that i was working in yeah that's awesome that also played a part into it so yeah it was a really dope play for a first play experience that was i was glad i got that one is it based on a true story yeah oh that's sick yeah that up that's tight daisy i forgot who wrote it sorry but that's okay so how did okay. you get into Z Nation? Was it part of the film program? I was actually kind of curious. Like, I'm guessing the film program had they, pla- like places for you to intern yep. and stuff. They had um, 
people producers from the show coming to the school like just okay. talking just like and scouting interviewing. and yep. okay and i was the only one that when i won't say i was the only one but austin did it uh that was the year before me oh okay but yeah same yeah same thing same exact yeah. thing but the year after they told us that there were people coming from z nation and i was the only one that decided to like get all fancy dressed and stood out so they were like we're gonna you have dressed you. fancy most of the time do for i <laughs> For class come on did i do you I remember do, what you wore i do wear like cardigans and button downs yeah and, yeah okay you're right <laughs> you do every now and then i'm in a hoodie mood occasionally <laughs> okay. and even then it's yeah. like this obnoxious. it's still fancy yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean everyone else is in a hoodie all the time so yeah. you, you stood out yeah that's, yeah. Fair. that's hilarious can so i tell you guys? was your first like non-film program what was my first non-film program Ooh, probably just some well like i mean like part of the like film program from the school what was like your first non-school related was it z nation or was it yeah it was z nation i still count it as being part of school just because a lot of my co-workers were also classmates so we'd Mm -hmm. like go to classes and then be on set you know so uh yeah for a while i just did like a lot of cryptocurrency commercials like investment apps like you and matt damon bro me and matt damon z nation was actually like on a streaming service though right Netflix yeah, and it was okay, on a Sci-Fi Network. There we go. I, I remember I saw Z Nation yeah. like somewhere. Like around yeah. There, yeah, so much fun to film. It's bad. It is. It's, it's not the best. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's not the best. It's, it's, but it was you fun. Were part of it. <laughs> yeah, it was fun to film. Being on set and you yeah. see like you're just walking to the bathroom and there's just an arm on the floor. Like that's amazing. <laughs> do I pee on it? Yeah. What do what I am do? I supposed to do here? What do I do? Do you guys need help? <laughs> Say. Oh, that's good. What's your latest thing you're up to now? What 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 are you dipping your hands in creatively? Creatively, nothing. Unfortunately, nothing. I just moved to Seattle, so I'm oh, still ooh. like building my apartment. I'm still working on building my finances back. Yeah. How's the apartment? Amazing. Amazing. It's dope, dude. It looks like a thing? dojo. It's, oh, it, it does. Looks like a dojo. It yeah. does. It's so a. It's technically it's your place of peace. It's a studio plus, so it's a Ooh. studio apartment, but it has a bedroom, but because the bedroom yeah. doesn't have an official door, it has like sliding doors you would put on the closet. Oh, that's even cooler. <gasps> it is a dojo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, a literally a dojo. Sente. It's literally a dojo, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll freaking sick. <laughs> Stop calling me sensei. Yes, sensei. <laughs> yes, sensei. <laughs> that's awesome. Dude. Yes, sensei. So after Z Nation, we graduated, all that stuff happened. Where did you go after here? Like what were what were your steps? You know, because Z Nation was kind of ending; that wasn't an option anymore. Like, what did you do to get involved out where in Spokane at that point? Freelancing. I, it's nice that a good chunk of this business is word of mouth. So, um, a lot of it was somehow someone like who you know. Yeah, somehow someone learned of a production coming to town, so it was their job to hire a crew, and I was one of the first people they'd call i'm not like top of the list but like but you were up there yeah i'm one of the people who they know it can be reliable so it was just for a while sitting around waiting for phone calls to be like you want to come be on set i'm like yeah sure freelancing but, yeah but like jordan said you had to start getting to a point of i think jordan said it on the last recording sorry probably it's okay. <laughs> we were talking about it yeah but I, I jordan said you can't wait for the world to come at you yeah, and that's yeah. kind of where I was for a while, kind of waiting for everybody to be like, hey, yeah. there's a PA over there. Let me help him. I yeah, had to start learning to step. be, yeah, I had to start learning to be like, all right, you're not going to come over and ask me for help. So I'm going to ask you mm-hmm. type deal. So mm-hmm. preparation. So you got to reach out and yeah. Yeah, be yeah, involved, yeah. get stuff on your nose. Make that first connection. Get stuff on your nose. Yeah. yeah. Help people. That's the best thing you want. Yeah. To connect more. Figure out how you can help other people as much as you well, can. Well, the easiest yeah. way. Like we've said, it's yeah. not about what you can get out of people. What can, what can I help you with? Exactly. Like how can I, you know. And if you go that right, I mean, as artists, we're not necessarily in a bad way, but we're pretty egotistical. Like, you get in your head, you want to have this idea, oh, so yeah. it has to be how it your is in vision, my head. Your, yeah. So mm-hmm. you, you have to learn to collaborate with people because, again, oh, yeah. I was that way until I met Nick. And now, in my head, I'll have something and only realize that Nick can do it better. I can describe what I need done to you guys and you guys can do it because I don't have that mm-hmm. tech brain. You have to learn how to collaborate because oh, yeah. I'm just a writer. I can't, if I could put my words onto screen and just make it that fast, sorry to snap. Oh, but, you're good. We oh, can't you even can hear snap it. as much oh, as you yeah, want. You Perfect. Can, you can snap as much as you want. There you go. But yeah. No, I, I love that feeding because I've, or the, no, the collaborating together because me and Nick working together is like, 
I feel like it turns into feeding into each other. Yeah. Like it's not just like well, it's, it's well, let's do it, blah 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 like this. It's like it's okay, exactly well, it's just, energy. It's literally energy. What's your idea? What's my idea? How can yeah. we collab that into one? So yeah. one oh, and, and one better one idea. Better yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. What I like too about us, I feel like, is we'll go well. Let's try all three of the shots. Then. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's make up one together. Then let's all try all three. And let's try yours. Sure. I mean, let's try mine. And then when we were shooting it. for yeah. jacks, like you yeah. were like, "Hey, let's shoot it this way." And then Nick, let's shoot and it I this way like, as well. And Nick's got it this way. Yeah. And, and then so when you like, it's trust too. You got to build a lot of yeah. trust. That's exactly with people. what I was about to say. Yeah. When you meet that, people who love doing other aspects of it, and I tell Nick all the time, he's my favorite person to collaborate yep. with because everything that I can't stand, and there's not a lot about filmmaking that I can't stand, mm. but everything that I can't stand, he either loves or he's really good at. So it's easy for me to be like, hey, we're let's make this short film. You so edit it though. Ends of yeah. The yeah. Meeting together. Let, let's yeah. make this really cool thing, but you're going to edit it. Don't, I'm not, no. <laughs> I'm, not yeah. <laughs> I'm not touching that. <laughs> We've always been yeah. in Yang. Yeah. It's just the way yeah. it's been. Yeah, it true. It's, it's always been that way. That so uh, what's been your greatest success in the industry, whether it's been acting, writing, Ooh. what's like been your favorite project or your... Like something that made you feel like, damn, I'm him. <laughs> Dreamin' Wild is a Ooh, feature film that just got shot last year. It's coming out sometime this year. I think fall of 2023 it's coming out. But I was the director's assistant on that. Ooh. So I got it. It was basically being a PA, but I was a PA for one person. Give yeah. it some perspective on the director as well. Like who was this? Bill Poland. He is the son of the former owner of the Minnesota Twins. He okay. right, cool. yeah. And he uh, owns owns his pr own production company. He's made a bunch of movies. The producers that were on it have been produced like Green Book. Jeez, uh, right. What's the uh, the Black Panther? Not the Marvel Black Panther. Oh, uh, like Spike Fred? Lee? No, not that one. It's more Judas and the Black Messiah. Oh, they yep, yep. that one. Like just a bunch of things that I loved. I was supposed to be a PA on that set and was a PA on it for three days before the director and one of the producers were like, you should be his assistant because... If I remember correctly, they were fighting over you, right? You had two things fighting over you? Which has never happened. Yeah. Let's go. Has also since not happened again. How many years... Sure that stroked your ego a little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. And I, I felt like I was like negotiating. So it wasn't like a huge, crazy amount of money, but I felt like I was like negotiating with people. Like, like hey, yeah. Yeah, this is actually what I'm worth. Yeah. It made me feel a little... Hmm, how uh, how long were you in the industry until that happened? Hmm. At that point, four years. Four years four. of essentially PAing and about three years like in the industry, and then that one little bit of internship at the end of school. Okay. So. So it takes time, yeah. people. It takes it time. Does. Well, it's it like does. any skill, dude. It's everything's hard because oh, everything's yeah. hard at the beginning. You know, yeah. like it's a skill you got to grow. Like any muscle, you got to work at it. Exactly. And, if yeah. You, if you could go back to your 16 year old self, what would you tell yourself right uh, now? You're getting oh, shit. deep already. We're oh. not even. Uh, we're not we're even, 20 minutes in. Oh bro. We're 20 Lord. minutes in. This is perfect timing. If I could <laughs> tell my 16 year old self anything, I would tell him. Probably kick mine in the shin. <laughs> that definitely <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Don't be a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> all of those. Things. Let's start here. That's all of us, though. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Don't be a dumbass. Uh, Don't be. That's a dumb. me six months ago. <laughs> Don't be a dumbass. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it happens. <laughs> uh, I would definitely say be yourself. Not that I was ever like super shy or trying to hide who yeah. I was or at any point, but there was a point where I would like dim. Love that sound. Yeah, it's nice. Huh? <laughs> there was a point where I would like dim myself to like yeah. fit, fit a mold. Into, yeah, fit into the room that I was in. And I've started now getting to the point of being like, if I walk into a room, I'm walking into a room. Yeah. I don't I don't want to like have to assimilate with I was telling Nick when I moved here, I went crazy with dangly earrings. Just because when I lived in Spokane It wasn't a thing. I would wear dangly oh. earrings and people would look at me like, Ugh You know it's you're funny. wearing yeah. dangly earrings. Literally yesterday, my my best friend Ian, I, I went out with my yeah. buddy Ian, I haven't seen him in months, and he commented I was wearing these earrings last night and he was like, you know, you were the one of the first people I ever saw wearing dangly earrings. And I was like, it's funny because you told me I looked like dumb back in high school <laughs> when I was doing it. And look at Daddy, me now. Look now at it's me a now. thing. It's in style now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a so, thing. No, like I, I get yeah. that. No, and it's, I, I, I tell my younger self the exact same thing is yeah. don't dim yourself for anyone else. Yep. yep. That, yeah, that would be my advice. Don't dim yourself. Yeah. We learned that very well. Yeah. 
maybe a little too well. The dumb squad was dumb <laughs> squad was a whole different. Oh, so a little life. little preface in oh, life. Uh, there were four of us in that lived in this little apartment section, uh, literally across the lawn from hi each Preston, other. Hi, Preston. Hi, Brian. Yeah, hi Preston, Brian, if you're listening. Brian Johnson, hey, shouts to Brian. I haven't seen you in a minute, man. Yeah. I hope you're doing good. We miss you and love you. It's my guy. Oh. But Brian and I were early birds, and Preston and Aaron were not. And uh, we called ourselves the Dumb Squad because we were just having, we, having fun. Well, we were in college, and <laughs> we were just making decisions, baby, on being dumb, like. And I appreciate. We waited out though. Yeah, I was about to say I appreciate that our stupidity never was like. We never got arrested or yeah, anything. Yeah, it was, it was like never illegal. Dangerous. Yeah. Like, well, well, well. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, but I mean, in the sense of like, like getting into like legal trouble, it's like okay, yeah. that was you should not have been. Doing no one that, outside yeah. of the four of us ever got hurt. So. That's true. That is. There were some serious injuries. There's some close ones, but <laughs> I have an Anakin scar because of Brian now. <laughs> awesome. I have the high ground. Uh, <laughs> I have the high ground. Wild yeah, times. That was wild times. Wild times. Good times. Okay. Past that. Who have you worked with? Ooh. I've heard I've heard some. Yeah, I want to hear this again because I love my these. favorite that I've worked with is Zoe Deschanel, Ooh. who she I can't say a whole lot because I'm still under NDA. NDA. Yep. That's, yeah. yeah. So I can't say a whole lot. But it was because I was the director's assistant. It would be things like we'd be filming two hours outside of Spokane and her plane lands in Spokane. So I get to go on these like two, two and a half hour road trips with just me and Zoe Deschanel. Talking Which about is wild. podcasts and baking bread. Like, <laughs> like I feel like she is new girl, like in a sense. Like nothing about her is produced. She That's beautiful. If you see her She's in an real. interview, if you see her on New Girl, if you see her in person, she That's is the she same is. person all the time. She's a That's beautiful cool. soul. Yeah. She's so sweet. She's funny. She's grounded. Which, which is yeah. Not She's crazy big for, now. Yeah. She's really big. Yeah. When did you get to work with her? On Dream and Wild. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's one of the leads in Dream and Wild. So being the director's assistant, I got like little special meeting perks. There you go. We sang That's Stevie awesome. Wonder together. I sang a song What's with that? Zoe Deschanel. I'm gonna and cry. She sounds like Dude, a princess. Dude, I am bro. so she jealous. Is. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she's awesome. She really, really awesome. is. She's got that like Snow White slash like, oh, yeah. Cinderella voice where it's like just keep going. She yeah. <laughs> She and yeah, she would do that all the time too. Like we'd be on set between takes, but because she's playing a singer in the movie, she just had a live microphone in front of her. So while they're setting up the next shot, she's just singing, singing. just entertaining, singing whatever. She's an entertainer. That's freaking That's awesome. awesome dude. Sometimes wow. she'll sometimes she'll sing an actual song. Sometimes she'll just do riffs on a microphone. And you're just the whole crew will sit there like staring at her, and then everybody's like, "Wait, we get gotta, to work. We gotta we got work. To yeah. work. <laughs> Go, back. Go back to work." That's okay. Awesome. You got Zoe. Any other crazies? Same movie, Walton Goggins. Dude, okay. he's a legend. He's amazing. He, I didn't get to talk to him a whole lot just because he's very to himself. He he's seems one, kind of like an introverted just more actor. Reserved. Not, not never in a mean way, but he was one of those like stoic. Yeah, yeah, stoic is a good word. He, he was also yeah. like Focus. he was one. <laughs> Talking about uh, how to train. How to train. Yeah. <laughs> he's his that, he, that's why. That's why they named him Stoic. Yeah, because he's so yeah, stoic. He's stoic. Yeah, Stoic. He's very Stoic. Uh, I don't even remember where I was going. Walton. Oh, Walton. Yeah, he's one of those actors that, like, also what I learned from working with him. He was one of those like, don't look at me actors. But I thought that was for the longest time. I thought that was like a diva thing. It's because you're supposed to be in a living room with you and your wife, and yeah. there's a hundred people on set. So it's don't look at him it's distracting, right? so that he can feel like he's in the living room with his well, wife. Well, you can oh, feel oh, eyes on you. Like, yeah, you, but like direct like eye contact, like staring at him while he's, yeah. Like, well, what does the director Oh, I guess he looks he, at, well, yeah. at the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They but got like, their little side screen. So like for the long, I love that I learned that about actors because for yeah. the longest time I was like, don't look at me. You, you're such a diva. No, it makes sense. It's not that no, at all. No, it puts all. you in the headspace. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not that at all. Love that. But yeah, Walton's awesome. Um Got to meet Casey Affleck. Same. I keep talking about the same movie. Casey Affleck. I mean, you got to meet a, a lot of people. That's a big one, dude. Oscar winner. Yeah. And we ate same. Boston baked beans in a diner. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> it was awesome. Dude, it what? was awesome. Were they like yeah. canned or? He brought them. <laughs> what? <laughs> Homemade? He <laughs> brought them and asked them. I got to a special chili. We got there and everybody ordered, but he brought his own Boston baked beans. It was like, you just got No, this is the brand I want. Yeah. Like, this is. 
<laughs> straight from Boston. Wow. <laughs> From Boston. I mean, they are Boston. They, they are from Boston. Yeah. So I feel like if anybody else walked in there, they'd look at them like a lunatic. So I says it. to him, I no, says, no. I, I says it again. So I says it again. <laughs> says it again. So I says it again. That's hilarious. I wish I could do accents. It's not hard. <laughs> you just gotta know where to put your tongue and where to hold your jaw. It's not too bad. That's oh what she said. So. If you had any advice for school and like coming out of school or just getting involved into the industry, like what would you say? We've already talked like you got a brown nose a little bit. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's every job. Yeah. You know, if you want to progress or move forward, you always have to yeah. take sure. first step. Initiative is always a. You, you got to take some shit for a little bit, right? Unfortunately, but yeah. What What would you say to someone in specifically for this industry? Like, what is you know, something that What's you can do. What's your best resource almost, you know? My advice would be bet on yourself would be my advice. It's it's kind of one of those industries that if you're good at something, you'll stay there, which is good because you want the job. But the unfortunate part is I was good at being a PA. So yeah. every time my phone rang, it was because they needed another PA. So Someone ha- I could trust. Exactly. Which is nice. And I appreciate yeah. that I'm trusted in that. But I also did not go to film school to be a PA. PA. Yes. Yeah. So similar to like a previous episode we talked about, you know, it's it's a it's nice getting to the point where you can say no. Yeah. Like n- turning down jobs where it's like that's yep. not going to further my my craft. It's it's really nice. Betting on yourself on like this is what I needed to do, but this is my next step. That was quite literally my catalyst for moving to Seattle actually. I was there and still feeling like I was on this like hamster wheel. I've been telling you that for years, bro. You have. I told you before I left. You did. Get the get the hell you out did. of here. But I at that point with what I wanted to do, I also knew I didn't want to be in Seattle and like just working a job to yeah. pay my bills in order to just be here. I knew if I wanted to be here, I wanted to be here doing something that I love doing. Yep. So now that I have that opportunity, it's nice. But at that point, I felt like I was just running in place. And yeah. I was like, I have more to offer than being the guy to file your papers. Not that I have a problem doing that, but it started feeling like I was- You're worth more. I started feeling like I was doing that to no end. And I was like, that's fine. And I would love to come back and work with the people in Spokane, but me physically, I have to go. I almost feel like that they'll let you stay unless you like start bugging or jumping. Yeah. And and there, it's in no way like- indicative of the people in spokane like it's not no, no. It, yeah it's not like the community it's the industry industry or it's the, the amount of opportunity as well like yeah. there's just so much more here yeah. on this side and and it's not that they don't have it it's just the amount that they can do for me specifically i feel felt like if i was say a cinematographer you can get plenty of work as a cinematographer in spokane or a cinematographer or videographer yeah. in the same realm but If you want to do sound, enough projects come through Spokane to do sound. But if you want to be a writer, you kind of, no one's only, people are only paying you as a writer if you write. You know what I mean? Like you Mm -hmm. can't. You can't be dabbling. Yeah. You can hire a PA to be a camera assistant the next time. By the time you hire me as a PA, your script's already written. So it's hard to hire me to learn script writing from a script that's already done. So I kind of felt like I'd just be on set and people are wanting to teach me all this tech stuff, and I appreciate that, but my goal isn't to be a gaffer, so I have to go yeah. somewhere where I can be a writer. You were a big fish in a small pond. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Without the ego. Like, <laughs> in, the, in the most non-egotistical <laughs> way. Yeah. Uh, but but no, but it's, 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 no, it's, you know when, it's like there's no, no more I can grow here. Like, I'm stuck in and this That's exactly what it was. Bubble. Yep, you know? that's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. So you gotta realize that, too. I think in this industry, you know, when you've reached a point and it's like, okay, I'm tired of doing this. And you have to look at your, you have to look at your own experiences. I, at that point, because I was a freelancer, I had a resume, but it was so outdated because I didn't update it. It, If you put what I was doing at the time on a resume, it just looks like I've been unemployed for five years. Unless it's either I'm unemployed for five years or here's a list of a thousand things I've worked on. Yeah. So I didn't even update my resume for a while there because I was, it was word of mouth. Yeah. So now you have to like, I have to be at this point where I'm taking my experiences and like trying to describe them on paper to show people who haven't met me. 
I do have I've done this. I have experience doing this, but I don't have a videography reel because I'm not a cinematographer. Yeah, how do you show that? I mean, your yeah. resume is literally yeah. the only way you that show that. That is it. Yeah. So, yeah. Dang, I haven't thought about it that way. I it's neither a lot did easier I until I had to do it. So you have <laughs> some, a tight resume, this is, though? This is my work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So piggybacking off of that, what's what's been your biggest struggle? Probably that. being in Spokane. Was okay. probably not like again just that locale. Not again, not because there's anything wrong with the people working in but Spokane. But you outgrew it. Yeah, me, I'm black and gay, so I'm. Someone once told me that that makes me three things. Cheers, Jordan. Cheers. Actually, hey, cheer. Trifecta. Somebody once told me that because I'm black and gay and trying to be a storyteller, that makes me three things. It makes you black, gay, and black and gay. So because you're no, a, that's no literally true, and that's I, I mean, valid. Again, not to get too political here, uh, but like a gay white man is white before he is gay, right? And that's something that I've experienced. I mean, I'm straight, but it's something that I've seen with a lot of my friends. So, right. I, I, yeah, so I because that. of that, it felt like being in Spokane that is predominantly white and predominantly straight. Super white over there, dude. It's, oh. <laughs> it is. No, it's, Farm it's, it's, it's grown. Very white. Yeah. They are grown in the fields Farm out grown. there, bro. <laughs> like, <Farm> grown. <laughs> they just start appearing, and it's like, I didn't know we had five kids. and Yeah. No, that's how it goes out there in Spokane. <laughs> I can't wear these shorts over there. No. <laughs> no, you can't. I've been stared at because I've had much higher shorts. Yeah. <laughs> I was selling them, dude. It's summer. Five five inch inseam. Absolutely. <laughs> it's busted yeah, up, get stared out yeah. here in Maple Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a pair of three inch seam. I was like, this is right. This, this, this is the way it This seems be. about right. This is, this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> Mandalorian fan? No. It's a big yeah, topic. He's not, he's not a sci-fi nerd. I'm so, not, yeah, 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 I'm you'll not, fall in love as with I the more baby The story is, yeah. is still good, though. They the are. story is I'm getting he's, into it. I was the. I listened to you guys' last episode, and I was. you guys were like, when you were younger, it was like people were picking on you because you were nerds. I was the one picking on the nerds. So awesome. now I'm wising. Well, we're all going to kick your ass after this yeah, episode. That's fine. So. That's <laughs> fine. I deserve it's it. It's good. Yeah. So now I'm getting more wise. I secretly wise. liked it, but I was a jock. I like the Force Awakens. Well, no, Does like, anybody like? Is that a no? Good one? That's the worst. Whoa, that's the one. one. Damn it! No, that's no, literally the, the worst. Eight, Get out. Episode eight is the okay. worst. Okay. Ep- uh, we, we talked about Can't this extensively. Cold. We did. Episode <laughs> eight is the absolute worst of the night. Seven is it. second to worst. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, but yeah, no. I, yeah, anime is now cool. I used to yep. watch like YouTube like episodes. Like I, yeah. I used to have to watch episodes on YouTube, but now it's like the cool thing to do. So it's, yeah. And I, I kind of like that I've been in that position because same thing with anime. I was the one that's like, you like anime? You're a dork. And now, because I'm older. Now we all come AI each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now I get to watch anime and experience these things that people have watched 15 years ago. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah, the stories yeah. are great. Have you seen Dragon Ball Z? Oh, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, good. I love when people transfer the um, style of anime to real cinematography. Oh, like, that's yeah. one of my favorite. Like, if Dude, we could channel the an energy, yeah. If me and Nick could channel something, I would love to channel that and try that out sometime. I think that Dude. would be beautiful. Yeah, and if I get to be a superhero, I mean, well, come on, you got you special guys. effects. Dude, that's, too. that's your <laughs> dream. Is it to is be, like, water a superhero? Yeah, I want to. I've always resonated with like, fire. <laughs> Fire characters. Oh yeah. Anyone who like character. anyone who does like fire stuff, I'm like, yep, that's me. Me too. I'm more of the flying kind of guy. Like, Who's yeah? Okay, if everyone <laughs> had their bending powers, what would it be here? Fire. 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 Wind. Fire. <laughs> You'd be air. <laughs> I feel like I'd be do water. You think, you'd definitely be water. I'd heal all your. Brain I, think I look asses. more like. Yeah. The, I, do I look more fire? No. <laughs> no. No. I think you'd be earth or air. I, or, yeah. like, I feel like I'd want to be fire, but I'd be without the mustache. Yeah. I think you're air. Pretty go with the, the flow, air. like yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see you as an airbender. Yeah, pretty peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> You're Aang. Yeah, he's actually yeah, the avatar. avatar. Yeah. He is the avatar. avatar. Jordan, <laughs> shave my head. Oh, Just get an arrow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw an arrow tattoo earlier. Oh, where? No, where? <laughs> where? On my head. It's I hidden. It's hidden. <laughs> my first anime was Castle in the Sky. I just told. Yeah, you seen that? yeah. Uh, it's it's no. a good movie. It is. It's, it's, it? it's Studio Ghibli, I believe. It's, oh, it's, dude, really it's ridiculously good. I mean, honestly, good. Anything, anything Studio Ghibli. Yeah, yeah. Is it Ghibli it's or old. Ghibli? It's Ghibli. old and it it's is Ghibli. really good. It's a okay. good and old anime. No For people that don't know, like every couple months they have like a festival where they just have like showings at dude. actual theaters around. Yeah, oh, Isaquad wow. is yeah, does yeah, it I've once seen, a month. I've seen Princess That's Mononoke. That's how big. It's like a fan. Uh, what is it called? It's not a cult. Cult, right? A cult. Well, it's uh, a cult. A cult fiction. It's an occult classic. A cult classic. 
Yeah, cult. it's I'm becoming not a cult. Not no, no, no. Drink I just want to see the movie. Yeah, anime is cool, drink, but I'm drink not. Drink your Corona. Is there any more? No, we're two sips now. Drinking boxes now. Yeah. <laughs> Take two. Drink. Take two. <laughs> I the one of the only animes I got super into was Invincible. Dude, Invincible oh, was good. Yeah. It's I showed you Jordan showed that, me yeah. that. It's so good. You that showed one. me that Dude, after Amazon a five hour free. long drive back from Montana. We I drove, tired. bro. <laughs> I drove. I offered. I drove. <laughs> well, yeah, I was I worried about my tire, remember? Oh, yeah, we could have exploded it. We could have exploded it. And <laughs> I wasn't going to have We that. were losing air. We kept stopping. It's like, like every, response? like, <laughs> how did I did that on my drive here yeah. when I moved here. Dude. I the same thing. Oh, no. I thought you well, meant it here right now. I was like, <gasps> no, 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 no. When no, I was driving sad. here from Spokane, when I was moving, I also had a Scary. time. I had a slow leak. And I was like, listen, I don't have, I just got an apartment. I don't have the <laughs> I don't money. I don't got the time. <laughs> I don't have the money. Did you figure out your spare? How can I get to Seattle? Did you figure out your spare? Nope. Who did? Is it a donut? <laughs> the tire shop. <laughs> oh, how'd you get it there? You pumped it up and then I, got it there. But, uh, luckily, I live right next door. Was to it a hand station, pump? So oh, <laughs> literally <laughs> hobbled <laughs> next door, put air in the tire, and then was like, "Fix it, please." Yeah, I'm please. broken. You I don't know what to do. How it's done. I hit Nick up about my tire. He was like, "Did someone take your spare tire?" I was like, "Yeah, I used it already." He was like, <laughs> "I was like, what do you mean you used it already? <laughs> like, it? <laughs> yeah, it's a one-time use. Like, what kind of spare do you have?" He was like, "No, you should still have it." So I went all the way downstairs to my garage, opened my car, and then sure. my spare tire. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Nick, I got a spare tire, dude." It's I'm like, awesome. "Yeah, they're multiple use, bro. It's a tire." I'm not a tech guy. Did you crank it up? Did, did you do no? No, <laughs> no. Yeah, I was just kidding. no. Absolutely not. I want to tell you the funniest oh. rule that Aaron ever had when we were involved in it's college. It's a rule I still abide still by. Still abide by. If So Cheney had terrible weather. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, our junior, senior year, it snowed probably 60 plus inches both years. Sounds we all lived in the same cul-de-sac area. Yeah. Uh, and so we'd all leave for class at the same time. And Aaron had a rule that if he slipped and fell, turn around and go home. Day's over. The Done. day is over. Done. Done. I don't live. No. <laughs> I live by that still. I no, still. Dude. So if we're we're walking out day, to man. class. <laughs> yes. Not starting off this way. We were walking out of our apartments. And we're like, good morning, Aaron. Like, oh, it's good to see you. Right like, back inside. Yeah. No, dude, he <laughs> ate shit like cartoon style feet above his head <laughs> and just slapped the ground. I know and, where you guys went to college is Iceland. Dude. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Like straight it's shit terrible. Ice all the time. Oh, wow. But <laughs> Brian and I both just looked at each other and looked at Aaron. And we're like, well, we'll see you this afternoon. Send buddy. me notes like, from class. Yeah. I'm out of here. It's dangerous conditions. I'll, I'll just turn here. around and it's do too this. too dangerous. No, yeah. yeah. None of that. There was one time where I was... I think I had three uh, classes that day, went to two, and then on my way to the third when I fell, yeah. going home. 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 Yep, going home. You're done it, I don't care when I fall. I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous out here. It is. It's dangerous. <laughs> no, Jeez. yeah. I, I get that. It's Yeah. It's also, a good rule. I'm also terrified of driving in snow, so anytime in the winter. I was the guy that was like, anytime in the spring you want, guys want to go somewhere, I got you, because in the winter. That's why I drove dude, in the I, winter. I was I sitting in the back dr- seat I've had panic. to drive in so much snow. I'd I've, I've learned how to drive in the snow. <laughs> My should. car was a fucking tank, though. True. Like, I used to ram it into the snow plow spot, remember? Yeah. The so, like, they, the wagon? Yeah, the wagon, yeah, bro. Oh, my so God. They, they used to <laughs> plow the snow into my spot. And so I was like, fuck you guys. And I would literally just floor it into now. it. And then it, by the end of the winter, there was just this ice wall of Dude. my imprint of my car. And I would just be like, all right, I'm good. Awesome. And just lock it in there. My spot. Now. It also helps that, like, Volkswagens are front wheel drive. Mine so. was all. Yeah, oh, you had well, the Passat I mean, you had the, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. Passat. But, I mean, yeah, with my Jetta front-wheel drive, you're, you're unstoppable. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're good if you know what to do. Floor it. I got <laughs> <all> <laughs> floor it. <laughs> it reminds me of that video of the guy, like, zooming up the hill, and he's like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, he's, he's like, he's like silly trucks <laughs> flying up into the ground. <laughs> and he, just he floors it and then just flies into the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, <laughs> we got okay. any more film questions for Aaron? Uh... I think we do one little quick random. If sure. you had to choose a genre and or favorite film, like what ooh, are you watching ooh, all the ooh. time? Mm, aside from Family Guy. that's Family <laughs> Guy is not something I count as like I watch all the time. That's it's like, like a, my it's like a background, background noise. noise yeah. at this I know point. exactly. Yeah. Comfortable noise like, to fall asleep to. Well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a comfort. Dude, literally, yeah. yeah. S- Cinema. Like what's the, the go-to? Something what are you inspired you in. by? The Warriors. 
the Ooh. Warriors? The movie from 1979. Ooh. It, Ooh. It's, oh, yeah. It's one of those that, like, I'll if you say it, it, most people don't know about it. And I, then as they nope. watch... And then as they watch it, so many other movies have referenced it. Yep. There was a That's, whole American dude, Family Dad. Guy, and, and like, I feel like I, I watch Shoot, like I old watch movies. Never seen it. Family Guy? Guy. Yeah. yeah. 2000. Put it up on the projector. It was 2001 <laughs> when I like first got here. So like literally Family Guy has taught me so many different movie references. And as <laughs> yeah. I watch old movies like now, I'm yeah, like, oh. Yeah, you had to Google that, them. <laughs> I, I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio was yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that was my experience when I watched uh, Misery for the first time. There was Dude. a whole episode yeah, where that's... Stewie was parodying Misery, oh, and then yeah. I went and watched the actual movie Shins and could Brian not take it. No, and that's uh, Space Odyssey. Yeah, yeah. So there was like some references from that, and like, oh, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. that's a wild it's movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did college in a different way. We're not going to mention on this studio, but we watched things from a different perspective of the rest of our class. Yep. I oh, do. Gotcha. yes, yeah. yes, oh. yeah, above it all, yeah, we, above the clouds, <laughs> yes, <laughs> something like that. We brought a different perspective above the trees, at least <laughs> that we know of. I could probably guess a couple that were on the same page, Dustin, a couple, the for sure, yeah, for sure, tombstone, you, you know, western classic, Ooh. <laughs> tombstone, <laughs> Patrick Swayze, Ooh. Ooh, that's a RIP. <laughs> Did he die? Yeah, yeah dude. dude. A long what? Time ago. A long time a ago. Long time oh, ago. really? Yeah. Five plus crazy? years ago. Oh, okay. You oh, must be a huge fan. Guy. <laughs> you must be huge. That broke dude. my heart. Yeah. I feel Don't like do it's that. Been way longer than five. That was just a guess. The I, other I guy that like looks 15, like Patrick Swayze. Really? Fifteen plus years, Patrick Swayze. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm out of the loop. I think. I feel say. like it's been long enough that I should have known that by now. Yeah. Well. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Rest it's, in peace, yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Keep on dancing. Dirty. You know, he was supposed to be the original actor on Grease. <laughs> he was supposed to be the original actor on Grease. He was supposed to be Danny Zuko. Oh, really? Yeah. He would have been so no, much better. No, so apparently, and I don't know if this is true, but I read that he was turned down because he didn't look manly enough. Wow. Hmm. Wow. They didn't they didn't watch I, Roundhouse apparently. I think <laughs> yeah. that was after that was Roundhouse. Wasn't it Roadhouse? <laughs> Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yeah. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yeah. Roundhouse. Roundhouse. Yeah. Roundhouse. Roundhouse. <laughs> I'm I'm an idiot for that. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse. Come on, that's a family. Peter, guy, why are you going down this street? There's so many turns. Roadhouse. 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 I found my people. Uh, yes. Boys. Well, we're at 45. I think we're. Uh, that's it. Right here. Well, 40, this was 11. weirdly artistic. Aaron, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having. Thank me. you for the perspective that Sensei. we gained. <laughs> Sensei. <laughs> We need but to talk I, about his dojo. <laughs> yeah, you guys gotta come see no, the dojo. Actually, yeah, no, the Very dojo's dope. Dojo. Last time I was there, there was an air mattress. I uh, hope you've upgraded. Nope. As long what? as we can take Jose to the unicorn for the first time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that yes. too. But and never and I'm, I'm you so haven't much been freer. to the unicorn? No. Dude. Do they have the best dude. apple pie shops? I'm so much freer now, <laughs> I so I can I go out and do stuff. You are telling me that two straight guys over here have been to the unicorn? You were supposed to take me, so you can't get mad. Wait, what, you what is this? Seattle, you have not been what there. What is it? I'm yeah. curious. What we'll is it? We'll take you there. It's a gay bar. It's a gay bar. Is it in? But it's not anymore. No. Is it like? Is it like carnival themed? No. No. It's like. It's just really no, pretty. No, the walls are actually so, like, really sick inside. No, it is kind of carnival tentish I, with the yeah. vaguely like remember It's pink being, inside. If yeah. it's your I've birthday, though, they put a unicorn. big dildo I've, I've hat been, on your head. I was <laughs> on a date with this one girl in Capitol Hill, I think. Oh, that's what I was. Yeah. I was I, it was this was probably zooted. So, like, I had a D&D <laughs> bro night with like, the D&D <laughs> guys <laughs> at this brew house in Seattle. And I'm pretty sure it was at like somewhere in Capitol Hill. And then I like was talking to this girl and like I was like, hey, like I'm here in Seattle and she lived in Seattle and I was like, just come meet me. Scooped out of the D and D. Yeah. And after, no, I told, like she knew what was going on. I, like I so like she met me at the brew house and I think like I it's browned, not a brew I browned house. out. No, no, no. I so br- at the brew browned house, browned out. out? The, have you never heard that? No. So instead of black, instead What's of blacking black out, out brown no, out. What's so, the like, difference? No, yeah, the difference, you're almost the difference there. is you're when you're blacked out, you're done. You don't remember anything. Right. When you're browned out, you're you like you, you you get snippets. Here, oh, like, you're like uh, okay. so. I remember going like into this bar. We like went to like two <laughs> separate bars, and there was one with like a bunch of like carnival stuff, and I think there was unicorns, and I think that so maybe you've been there. That's you were there. Was it like a Downstairs, yeah, I yeah. think yeah. Yeah. So there's an upstairs shine, too. Yes, you yeah. were there. Yeah. Shouts out to Annabelle. She, you don't know this, but I was pretty blacked out that night. Yeah. <laughs> brown, 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 brown. She, she was mad because like, like 
like a month later we were talking and like i didn't remember stuff she told me that night and i was like i'm so sorry <laughs> Bro, I I, it doesn't it take me being browned out for that to happen <laughs> <laughs> like no, but same. They do have I'm, arcades. My ADD too. is like crazy. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Oh yeah, but they yeah, have they live do. music, no, arcade. Should, yo, we should do like a, a night out in Seattle. Seattle. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. AOP on a- Capitol a- Hill. AOP. We hit AOP. the over Capitol Hill. Hill. We hit the silent disco, just popping and surprise Dan. Yes, <laughs> yo, he, <laughs> is he throwing like all the time? Dude, he said any time. Yeah. Oh, Dan, no, if you're listening, I'm gonna one of our clients. He's a silent disco. He's always doing. I've seen that. Yeah. They are. So we. He said any time we want to come out. He's the guy that's always. You need a drink. You hungry? Yeah. Love that. He's like, we're in a bar, bro. What are you gonna grab me? Cherries? Like, (laughs) there's also this place in. Um, I shouldn't have been talking because I don't know where it is, but it's (laughs) in Washington. I think Federal Way. I want to say. It's like a VR thing. Ooh. I think I sent it to you. Yeah, it's like they you stole put, my idea. You like put on? <laughs> yeah. They heard the podcast. <laughs> you can like get a group of friends, and the video I saw there was like five of them, and they all put on headsets, and you were in this big room, and Holy you could see each other in the sets, fire. and there's zombies coming Dude. at you. Dude, it's oh, so we sick. have to go do that. That it's would be so AOP, yes, to, yep. as well. That would be fun little vlog night. Uh, yeah, That's that would be dope. Like, I'm down. Down. All right. Well, we've made plans. Well, that's episode eight. That's season two. This is one of this our was favorite <laughs> yeah. artistic. No, honestly, yeah. This was this was fun. It was a good time. And remember, yeah. if you could dodge a wrench, you can you dodge, can dodge a ball. Dodge <laughs> a ball. Oh yeah. If you can dodge traffic, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> we'll see All you right, next well, time. Thank you for coming on. Thank this you. was weirdly artistic. We'll see you next time. Stay weird. Educational. Weirdly artistic. Damn, that's weird.